Welcome to Easy Anatomy. Uh, I will start talking to you now about the anatomy of peritoneum. Like, and I know that there is challenging topic, and uh, I will try the best I can to make it simple. So, let us start by taking a cross section or sagittal section in the abdominal and the pelvic cavity okay if we can imagine that here is the body wall anterior abdominal wall starting from here this is the umbilicus umbilicus this is the diaphragm this is posterior abdominal wall I'm coming here to the pelvic cavity okay down here this is the pelvis and here is the anterior abdominal wall anterior abdominal wall so if you want to understand the arrangement and organization of the proteinium, let us first uh, imagine the position of different organs here inside the abdominal cavity and maybe pelvic cavity also. For example, let us say that this sagittal section is going through the liver and the liver has those surfaces, four surfaces, the superior surface, okay, anterior surface, and posterior surface then inferior surface inferior surface it's which shape this is the liver this is a liver and the liver is covering the stomach if you have tuck, cut section in the stomach and here is the stomach is located under the liver part of the stomach covered by the liver and the part of the stomach covered by the anterior abdominal wall as you see okay then you will find a small intestine this sm small intestine is everywhere is every this is the small intestine it is located everywhere okay kidney and the abdominal aorta are located in the back in the posterior abdominal wall here pancreas the same pancreas is located towards the posterior abdominal wall so if you come down here to the pelvic cavity sigmoid colon then you come you will find the rectum and the inner canal rectum if this is the pelvic cavity of uh, female, here is the vagina, and then you have the uterus. Then you have anterior hair is urinary bladder and urethra, urinary bladder. So this is just. I'm, I'm focusing on the most important organs which really play important role in organizing the peritoneal cavity inside the abdominal cavity. So, peritoneum is a continuous sheet, is one sheet starting from the anterior abdominal wall back to the posterior abdominal wall, back to the posterior abdominal wall, and then reflecting back again to the anterior. It means like if you can apply this concept that with a parietal and the visceral it is the same sheet but what happened the parietal layer lining the body wall and the visceral layer lining the abdominal organs and the pelvic organs so let us start from the starting point here is umbilicus so this is I'm not going to remove the pen. So this is what? This is the proteinium, parietal. 
reflecting coming from the abdominal wall then going to the diaphragm then from the diaphragm is going to reflect on the liver here is the upper surface here is the anterior surface then surrounding the liver until it reaches to the junction between the posterior surface and the inferior surface so this is posterior this is inferior here is the porta hepatis the hilum of the liver so the peritoneum will connect it to the lips of this hilum so the hilum itself or this window for the liver does not is not covered totally by the peritoneum instead from the lips is reflecting to the stomach is reflecting now become two layers you see the layer coming from the posterior surface and from inferior surface then they form one fold this fold we call it lesser omentum surrounding the stomach from anterior and the posterior then descend okay coming from the greater curvature of the stomach and descend through the abdominal cavity as greater omentum it's two layers it's two layers this is the greater one then greater momentum reflect back and either surround or run over the transverse colon this is the transverse colon okay this is the stomach this is pancreas and as you see either surrounding it or go above it and then or surrounding it either way then is going to the pancreas pancreas is retroperitoneum discovered from the anterior it is triangular in shape in cross section so it's covered on the anterior and and the superior surface but posterior surface is not covered because this is is going back as you see and covering the kidney kidney and your surface only reflect on the posterior abdominal wall and go again to the diaphragm okay in the posterior abdominal wall start to reflect anteriorly to cover the small intestine covering the small intestine as you see creating what we call it the lesser the mesentery creating the mesentery and going it down then reflect on sigmoid colon again and until it reaches to the pelvic cavity in the pelvic cavity as you see is going to cover the upper third of the rectum and the anterior surface of the lower part of the rectum reflecting on the upper part of the posterior surface of vagina surrounding the uterus reflect from the anterior surface of the uterus to the upper surface of the urinary bladder then reflect back to the anterior abdominal wall wow as you see it is continuous sheet it is a continuous sheet it is continuous sheet this part is called parietal this part called parietal as long as it is connected to the body wall diaphragm anterior or this is parietal this is parietal this is parietal okay however this one which related to the organs we call it visceral we call it visceral the parietal receive nerve and the blood supply similar to the body wall like intercostal lumbar arteries intercostal nerves lumbar nerves etc however the visceral part of peritoneum receives the same nerve and the blood supply as the organs okay okay so as you see we have this peritoneal fold which is falciform shape or crescentic shape we call it falciform ligament falciform ligament 
فالسي فورم ليجمنت بيكوز ات از كريسنتك شيب از ا ريفليكشن اوف باريتال بروتينيوم فروم ذا انتيرو ابدومينال وول تو ديافرام تو ذا ليفر اند جيس وات ذيس از ذا وان ويتش كارينج بلاد سبلاي تو ذا فيتاس لايك امبلايكال فين اند امبلايكال ارتريز امبلايكال فين برينجينج اوكسجينيتد بلاد تو ذا فيتاس امبلايكال ارتريز برينجينج نون اوكسجينيتد بلاد تو ذا بلاسينتا So one coming from the placenta and two coming back from the fetus to placenta. And this umbilical vein which will form the ligamentum teres. This will be ligamentum teres, which originally was umbilical vein. This fold between liver and the small and the stomach is called lesser omentum. This fold which descend has, has two wall, each wall is two layers, the anterior wall and the posterior wall is called greater omentum. This one between the transverse colon and the pancreas is called transverse mesocolon. This one for the small intestine is called mesentery. Okay? Mesentery. As you see this organization creating two, two sacs, two cavities. Two cavities. This one, which I'm going to mark it with black, you see, this cavity is a continuous cavity. This is what we call it greater sac. Greater sac, you see? Everything here. This is what we call it greater sac. It's called the greater sac. Greater sac. And the one behind the liver, lesser omentum, stomach, greater omentum between the two layers, the two walls of the greater omentum, this one is called lesser sac. It's called the lesser sac. Okay. When you look at this sagittal section, you think that there is no communication between the lesser sac and the greater sac. This is obvious, it's clear. You cannot see any communication between both. But actually there is a communication behind the lesser omentum here. You see this arrow? The communication here, we call it foramen of Winslow or, 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 or epiploic foramen, or epiploic foramen. Epi Epiploic foramen. Epiploic foramen is a foramen located behind the lesser omentum. Behind the lesser omentum. Okay? And actually, it is related to the portal triad. Like if you introduce your finger behind this lesser omentum, inside the lesser omentum, between these two layers, between these two layers, there is portal triad. Hepatic artery, common bile duct, and the portal vein. And behind this layer, inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava. So keep in mind that the boundaries of this epiploic foramen, hepatic artery, okay, common bile duct, and portal vein located behind then another vein which is larger vein is called inferior vena cava inferior vena cava so this is inferior vena cava this is hepatic artery okay this is common bile duct and this is portal vein and the foramen is like this this are behind between the portal vein and the inferior vena cava. It's called the epiploic vein. 
clinically important. If you do surgery on the liver or in the stomach and you touch this area, this is good landmark, okay? If you want to ligate the portal triad or you work on them. So we know now the greater sac and the lesser sac. I'm not going to explain to you the boundaries because the boundaries now is obvious. The lesser sac anterior, there is liver, there is lesser omentum, there is a stomach, there is greater omentum. Posterior, there is posterior wall of greater omentum, there is transverse colon, there is pancreas, and the posterior abdominal wall, as you see. From the top, diaphragm. The top is diaphragm. From below here, down, is the reflection of greater omentum. Okay? Then, here is the greater omentum and the transverse mesocolon, etc. Of course, I am skipping stuff in the middle, like behind the stomach, there is a spleen and there is another proteinial fold, it's called the gastrosplenic. Between the kidney and the spleen, there is another proteinial fold, it's called spleenorenal or lanorenal, etc. But I'm focusing now on this nice introduction and the simple introduction to prepare you to understand the spaces and the proteinial folds. Okay? Okay, mesentery, the same, it's reflection from the back to the front to surround the, the small intestine. And as you see, there is root. This is the root from here to here is the root of mesentery. And it is about six inch long because it extends from the duodenojunctional reflection to the ileocecal junction. It's just a six inch. But this is a free border, free border, which has the same length as the small intestine. It's about six meter, six meter. What are the content of this proteinial folds? You need to understand this proteinial folds provide, provide passage and 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 root for uh, and and uh, and root for blood vessels and the nerve and the lymphatic to each organ so the lesser omentum contains a blood supply of liver and the stomach greater omentum contain blood supply to the stomach also and then transverse mesocolon contain blood supply to both transverse colon and pancreas mesentery you will find in the back here there is big artery descend from descend from the thorax down here to the abdomen this is aorta the aorta will send here superior mesenteric artery which travels through this fold and supply the small intestine superior mesenteric artery okay so you will find that this is a way for blood vessels to reach each organ in addition to that, they are rich in fat, like you will find, for example, you will find that the greater omentum is rich in fat, there is fat everywhere. This fat, which you consider as fat storage and the energy source, etc., but also is called, considered or we call it the policeman of the abdomen, policeman of abdomen this policeman of abdomen because if there is infection you will find that this will surround and localize the infection inside the abdominal cavity okay because it is also rich in macrophages so try to counteract and fight against the infection and also against the spread of the infection I would like to emphasize when you look at this diagram you can understand what would happen if there is perforation in the stomach there is gastric ulcer and there is perforation and leakage of the gastric juice so this leakage will go to where lesser sac correct and it may hit what pancreas it can lead to pancreatitis it can lead to pancreatitis this is what i'm saying and on the upper surface of the upper border of the pancreas, there is a splenic artery. Not only that, also can hit the splenic artery. So you need to understand that this organization make you 
easy to understand some clinical issues okay okay so here is again is falciform ligament originally contain the umbilical vein which bringing oxygenated blood to the fetus and after birth become ligamentum tears okay when it comes to pelvic organs this is a female you will see that the uterus totally surrounded by the proteinium except the anterior surface here of the cervix and urinary bladder only covered by the upper surface on the upper surface the rectum is partially covered by proteinium vagina only the upper part of the posterior surface okay okay i hope that this is provide you uh, introduction to to to, to uh, the organization of the proteinium uh, if you want to go more deep to the proteinium you need to remember like if this is the stomach okay and here is the liver liver this is the port hepatis you will find that in the lesser between the lesser curvature and here there is lesser omentum there is lesser omentum, which extend to the first part of the duodenum okay two layers and you can imagine that between the two layers the blood vessels related to the stomach and related to the liver okay this is the attached border and here is the free border free border we call it hepatoduodenal ligament this is hepato duodenal because it is related duodenal to the duodenum okay what are structures here you will find that hepatic artery as i mentioned portal triad hepatic artery okay common bile duct then behind them the portal vein portal vein okay so those are the three structures and at the attached border here hepatic artery is the source is coming from celiac trunk and celiac trunk located in this area behind here so this is hepatic artery which is a source for right gastric artery right gastric artery and also gastroduodenal artery which descend behind the duodenum gastroduodenal celiac trunk is a source of the left gastric the left gastric so here is the left gastric which ascend and descend here and anastomose with the right gastric so this is left gastric and this is right gastric okay this is esophagus and then it starts giving branches those, those, those are the two gastric arteries okay then uh, there is third branch from celiac trunk go behind the stomach this is the splenic artery splenic artery which go to the spleen and from there send short gastric to the stomach especially at the fundus and also left gastroepiploid left gastroepiploid okay the gastroduodenal artery descend here sending right gastroepiploid and superior pancreatico duodenal why i'm mentioning this because which fold here this fold is greater momentum this is a greater one which reflect back this is greater momentum so the content here of greater momentum gastroepiploid blood vessels 
and the contents of the lesser elementum is much more. You have right and left gastric, the gastric blood vessels. In addition to that, hepatic artery, common bile duct, and the portal vein. There is gastrosplenic ligament here, connecting this to the spleen. This is the spleen, which receive a splenic artery. A splenic artery sends short gastric branches, which reach to the stomach through the gastrosplenic ligament. Gastrosplenic ligament. Okay. I will not go into more detail because I will save this detail with individual organs. Okay. However, before I leave you, I like to emphasize something important that when it comes to proteinial cavity, keep in mind, keep in mind that if this is diaphragm, this is diaphragm okay and here is the ascending colon transverse colon descending colon okay the proteinium covering the colon the ascending and descending from the front and from the side from the front and from the side and from this creating gutter or depression here like imagine that this is a pen okay which represents the colon and here is the proteinium which covers the colon like this okay you see creating this gutter creating this gutter this depression here and this gutter in the side so we call it again this is the this is the left gutter and then the other that this is the, the, the ascending column which is the red pen this is the right gutter okay you will find that this gutters gutter continue up until it reaches to the sub diaphragmatic space and here is the right here is the left what divide the area under the diaphragm into right and the left subphrenic we call it subphrenic space if you remember we have the falciform ligament falciform ligament which reflect if you remember to the liver and this falciform ligament divide the space under the frame into right subphrenic and the left subphrenic space so this is falciform ligament if you see, you will see that the right subphrenic continue down here with the right paracolic gutter. This is paracolic gutter. Okay, why this is important? This is diaphragm again. This is diaphragm. Why this is important? This is important because which organ is here and the common to be infected? Appendix. Like imagine that there is appendix. <clears throat> And there is appendicitis. You don't get surprised if there is rupture appendix or there is appendicitis. One of the most like uh, fatal complication, can, uh, let us say it can be fatal, is peritonitis. And this can spread until it reaches to this space. Okay? Similar, if there is any infection in the left side, especially here there is hepatorenal between the liver and, uh, oh, sorry, especially also here that there is uh, uh, ascending colon and also sigmoid colon. Again, if there is any infection in this side, again, it can spread to the left subphrenic. Okay, so this is very important just to keep in mind. Okay. Thank you. I hope that this is helpful and uh, with individual organs we can learn more about proteinium. And just to keep in mind that proteinium, uh, I, I didn't mention at the beginning because this is common concept when it comes to individual organ that we have either fully covered with proteinium organs like liver, like stomach, like small intestine, and 
bar shelly cover bar shelly cover like colon ascending and descending colon retroproteinian which is located behind the proteinian like kidney like duodenum pancreas i didn't start with that because again this is with individual organ but keep in mind that if i ask you what are completely cover the organ with proteinium immediately you mentioned liver stomach spleen intestine liver stomach spleen intestine seed point colon uh, and partially covered like uh, ascending and descending colon retroproteinium like pancreas like duodenum and and the kidney and the blood visits thank you